welcome to the Formula Off-Road. Now the Icelandic Championship has finished. However, now we take a look at the final two rounds of the Norwegian Championship. Iceland and Norway are the only two countries that have Formula Off-Road Championships. However, one round uh, was in Sweden this year of the Norwegian Championship. Three Iceland Icelandic drivers competed in the event uh, that took place in Skien, just south of the capital Oslo. Our focus will be on Haukur Veðar Einarsson, who finished second in the Iceland Championship. Here we can see some of the prep work needed to take part in this kind of an event. Cars had to be taken out of the containers and the pit had to be built. Uh, this weekend is the last race in Norwegian Championship. Uh, the, yeah, the last two races. We go here earlier in the summer and took the first races, the first two races, and we could did a good job there and we are in the first place after that race in the Norwegian Championship so we are hoping to get the second place in the Norwegian Championship this year if we take this race and going, doing a good job. And uh, now we're preparing for the race, uh, getting the cars out of a container and such. Uh, how much of a preparation uh, job are, is going on here? We are make uh, put the tent on and we are the guys are making the car ready. There was a short time to get them ready after Akureyri, so we have to do some things here. Yeah. And yeah, we are doing that now. And what are the main uh, differences between uh, the, the hills here and uh, the hills back in Iceland? The hills here are much uh, uh, longer, much cheaper. Uh, they are loose. You get not so much track, so I think you have you have to have much power in your car. They are not, you know, in Iceland short hills. Uh, every hills here are long, so yeah, I think you're driving max, driving longer in every tracks. Hegur had a mathematical chance with 20 points up for grabs this weekend. Atli has competed in all the events this year. Atli, now we're uh, yeah, here in Skien for the last two races of the Norwegian Championship and uh, you're doing quite well here in Norway this season. Yeah, it has been uh, uh, doing very well. And you're leading the championship? Yeah, with only five or six points, so yeah. it's not much different. Yeah. And there are 20 points at stake this weekend, so anything can happen? Yes. <laughs> uh, what's the big, biggest difference racing here in Norway and racing in Iceland? Uh, the biggest difference is probably uh, the high of the hills. They are much longer and here's a lot of more uh, sand, so it's uh, not much grip. Yeah, there's a, a less grip here than in Iceland. Yeah, I think so. So do you need more power to race in Norway, do you think? No, I think not. Yeah. I think it's very good like it is. <laughs> and, and obviously you're aiming for first place both of the days. Yeah, of course. We try the best. Now, Grim Dreliason was driving the Icelandic Championship winning car. Grim Dreliason usually drives the car rodeo. Grim, yeah. now you've looked at the tracks. How do you like them? Uh, they look great. They yeah. look. Uh, they're very high, so it's going to be fun. And a new car in a new country. What are your expectations for the weekend? Uh, victory. Yeah. yeah nothing else. Nothing else. The, the Icelandic Championship winning car. Do you feel more pressure? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I feel a lot, a lot of pressure. Yeah. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Now here's the track inspection for day number one. The conditions were difficult compared to Iceland, and the hills are high and long, and a lot of loose sand. Hey, good. You looked at the tracks. How do you like them? Uh, I like them pretty much. I think. <laughs> uh, quite demanding. Yeah. But uh, are they all possible? I think so. Maybe the last one is the harder and harder one, but I think you can go all the tracks. No, I think it's easy. First track here, it was a bit rainy to begin with, and the first hill proved to be very easy. Then they had to get back down to this tight section and the final gate was at the bottom of the hill rather than the top as usual so uh, things done differently in Norway and here we see uh, Haukur sliding down and there's a lot of loose sand there these tracks probably changed quite a lot during the day now easy 350 points the highest score you can get in a track The 
first part of day one proved to be way too easy for these drivers, with almost everyone getting the full 350 points. Hegud had some problems in the second track, where he started first. Might recover from this, that's actually well done, he needs to get rolling, speed is uh, essential in this loose stuff. That engine is taking a beating right now. He managed to uh, get up there, however he is in trouble there because he needs to go through this gate. He'll need to reverse. No, he gets the stick there, but loses 60 points on everybody else. Here is Atli Jamel Ausgesson driving Thunderbolt. He just needs a solid result both days to get the Norwegian Championship title. And here you can see how much track evolution has been. Here we have track 3, this is a, another very easy track. No real obstacles for the drivers to tackle, just a hill. Now the fourth track was a time attack. Hugo got the fourth quickest time, which got 301 points. After the track he was sitting in fourth place. It is Torel Torland driving Ugly Betty, he got the second quickest time. However, Atli Amel got the fastest time, and after four courses, he had a perfect score of 1,400 points and had a 24.8 on um, air. Joachim Knudsen here was second in the championship behind Atli. He threw away his chance of the title by rolling the Terminator X in the time attack. Very disappointing for the Norwegian. Now let's go to track five of six, and now things start to get interesting. Hey, good there. Off. And he's going to try to go here. Big jump, that's nicely done. No penalties so far for Hökud. He needs to win back the points he lost in the second track. Steep side slope here, and there's a long way down if you make a mistake. And he was so close to rolling it right there. Fantastic run. 350 points, 10 penalty points. That's the way to do it. This puts the pressure on Atli Amel. He makes it past the first gate here and needs to get going again. And oh, he turns a little bit much to the left there, gets thrown over it. Will he recover from this? He needs to get the car spinned to get up top, or will he just leave it at there? 40 penalty points for reversing, no grip, that was a mistake. These pedal tires really only work in one direction, and that is everything uh, gone from him. Backs out, which leads to the problem of getting safely down. 250 points for length, 40 penalty points, so 210 in total. Now here is Guðmundur Eliasson driving Thor. Guðmundur only borrowed this car from Thor in this race. However, he might want to uh, make that permanent after the track. Only 40 penalty points for Guðmundur there. Here is Thor Eil Thorland. He makes it all the way to take the lead. Guðmundur is second, Haukur third, and Atli fell down all the way to fourth. Now the sixth and final track of the day was quite simple. Just two gates, one at the bottom and one at the top. However, it was steep. Here is Ronnie Eriksson driving the devil and he was first to tackle the course and the first one to roll. Crowd enjoy that. Next up was Hukur Vida. We're sitting third, he can really put the pressure on Grimmitter and Thoreal if he makes it all the way. However, this is no easy climb. Let's see what Hugo does here. Gets thrown up in the air and he... Well, not a big roll. 180 points for length. But... Um, it was reminiscent of his Akernes double backflip and... Um, way down he goes. Hey, good. What happened there? Um, we, I tried to go up and roll over and stuck in the car. Yeah. So uh, uh, was it like a bad feeling or was it just comfortable sitting there? Comfortable. <laughs> Always comfortable to be in my car. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty happy. 
looking at the circumstances. Now let's look at Torail Torland. Will it be the same result? Oh, that's actually quite clever, but he doesn't quite manage to get it. Done, 160 points there. However, he stays in first place for now. Atle has a chance of taking the lead by going all the way. He will also secure the title with one round remaining. He's gonna go for it, gets thrown up there. And that's uh, game over, 160 points. So Toreil stays in first place. Now let's see Grim he needs 240 points to win. And that's gunning it, he got up quite high. What do the judges say there? 190 points for length. So let's look at the final standings. Thor El Torland wins. Guimundur Eliasson second, Haukur Einarsson third, and Atli Amil fourth. Atli Amil still in the lead for uh, the championship. The first uh, three courses was really easy, and everybody got 350. Yeah. Uh, so I saw it when we went to the courses uh, early this morning that uh, you have to have 350 in that one, yeah. and the race was going to be decided in time course and track five. What was the difference between third and first? Where did you make some mistakes? I think it was in track two to drive. First in that track, it was pretty uh, loose the hill, so the car didn't go very well. So I was stressed a little bit up to go all, all the way up. So I take some penalty points. So. Now here we see the standings in the Norwegian Championship before the final round. Atli Amel leads Torail. Joachim Knudsen third, Haukur Einarsson fourth, and Roger Fossen uh, in fifth. Fourth place, that's obviously good, solid points in the championship. Is your mind more than the championship rather than the event win? Of course I want both. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good to uh, get as many po points that I can. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. And Atli Amel needs only one uh, point. Like in Iceland there are two classes, but the other class is not the street legal cars. In Norway the modified class is quite popular. The only major difference between modified and unlimited are the tires. Mod modified have to use the standard paddle tires, not the super scoops. Christian Jensen driving the turbo duck ended up as champion in the modified class before the weekend. He had an 8 point lead and by finishing 3rd and 1st he secured the title. Now let's take over to the second day. There was good weather throughout the day. More spectators and the tracks were definitely more demanding. How good, how do you like the tracks today? I think they are pretty rough. There, there seems to be a lot tougher than yesterday. Yeah, much more. And do you think that will uh, suit your driving style? Yeah, I think it's, you, you know, it's gonna be more different between the drivers today. Here is Mikael Jonsen driving Pegasus, first in the first course, for first roll of the day, and that's only 50 points. Now here is Kalle Sundbring, he's from Sweden, this is Grippen. The first gate gives the drivers 100 points, so only 80 points for Kaya. Here we have Jimmy, Jimmy Bergen from Sweden. Trying the Raptor, and yes, is he getting up there? Fantastic from the Swede. The final part, however, is quite easy. So he's taking a huge amount of points on, over everyone else. 350 points for length and only 30 penalty points. Here we have Roger Fossen from Norway. And uh, that didn't quite work out like he wanted. He finished the first day in fifth. The car stalled when he got up 110 points. Here we have Oivind Svensson from Norway. The first track is proving to be very difficult. Now, who could be that? Will he get up? Nope, just a big jump and a big roll. 90 points. And we can see it again. Big jump, big roll. Now here is Torel, uh, fantastic driving from the Norwegian. He 
manage to get up here. Now he needs a win today and has to hope that Atle doesn't finish in the top eight to win the championship. Now this is a good start since Atle didn't make it past the 100 point gate in this track. So a 310 point run for Torrell. Let's look at the standings and uh, Jimmy Bergren leads Tor Ale. They were the only two to finish the track. Hey, good. Oh. What happened to the car in the last track? Uh, some of the holding the front axle was broken, so we had to change it. So, but everything is fixed now? Yeah, we think so. I think so. Here we are, track two is an easy uh, start, which is a simple hill, but then Hoku has to turn right. Very steep slight side slope, and it is very loose. And there he gets stuck, 250 points for length. Here is Joachim Knudsen from Norway. He has no chance of the title after the roll in the time attack yesterday. However, he drives this track superbly. He managed to get all the way. Here is Ati Amil. Does the same, 330 points for Atli Amil. Now Toreil Torland from Norway. He was first in the starting order, so he has he had a lot less grip than the others due to the track evolution, and here he gets stuck. Only 210 points. Jimmy Bergren, he can take a demanding lead here. If he goes all the way, and he does, he definitely went through the gate there. 40 penalty points, so that's 310 points in total. Some choose to watch the race from above, I guess. Now the third track of the day. It was the exact tra same track as the final track on day one. So they have uh, seen it before. Now here is Kalle Sundbringen from Sweden. He has already rolled once today, and that's his second roll, 150 points. You left your hood there, Kalle. Now here we have Atli Amel, he goes pretty far, but not far enough. Saves it from rolling further though, so that was 170 points, and that means that Atli is in seventh after this track. So the title is at risk, he needs at least 8th place. This track proving to be impassable like yesterday. But Jimmy Bergram had other ideas. That is a stunning drive from the Swede. And he is running away with this race. Now this might be the best instance of the extreme track evolution in skiing. After a few more, car, more cars went through, this track pretty much just got easy and even the, just the standard modified cars went up with ease. Now let's look at the standings. Jimmy Bergren leads Tor Eil, Jochen Knudsen, Guðmundur Eliasson and Haukur Einarsson. Atli Amel down in 7th place. Like the day before, the fourth track of the day was a time attack and Kalle Sundbring got the quickest time, moving him up to eighth in the standings and putting the pressure on Atli. Höku didn't go well in this track and only got 276 points out of 350. However, he's still sitting in fifth, but the gap to four first place is now almost 400 points. In the fight for the first place, Torreil got the third quickest time, giving him 331 points. Yet again, Jimmy Bergren was driving spotless. He was only 0.3 of a second slower than the fastest time, giving him 347 points and extending his lead. This car and driver combo proving to be a good match here in skiing. The Raptor is quite unusual since it's much smaller than the other cars, but that makes it much more limple and lighter. Fifth track was incredibly steep. Here the drivers are looking at where the best line over this bridge is. Joachim Knudsen uh, was third before the track, but the gap to Torail and Jimmy is more than 150 points. At least he tried, and that's a big bad roll. That's a huge roll. And uh, only 100 points to show for it. 
Now let's see us see how Kumdr Eliasson goes. He was fourth before the track and he guns it here full throttle. That's a big jump! It's not only Thor Thorma that can fly this car, but that is also... Well, it looked like it was going to be a big roll, but he got it saved. That was a spectacular jump. However, the safety crew were quick on hand and Grumendor was fine. Although he had a little bit of pain in his back after that big hit. Walks away. But let's see that big jump again. Full throttle and just gets it thrown up in the air here. Spectacular from Kumidur. Makes it look like a red tool, not like an, a loner. Here is Torel Torland, driving ugly Betty. Now that's where he needed more speed. However, the save was nice, but only 50 points. Kale Sundbring. Kale made sure to get as much TV time as possible by rolling in almost every track. But why does he keep putting that front and back on the car? Just leave it there, boys. It's gonna end up there again anyway. Now, Jimmy Bergren. The man to beat today has been unstoppable. What will he do? That's nicely done, but not quite far enough. Oh, that might be a nasty roll. Car looks pretty much okay. But got a big hit there at the beginning. This is who uh, could have been there in the last track of the day, and that's where things went bad for Hukur. Looked pretty good up until the car just completely dug itself down in the back. Now Jimmy Bergren, the winner of the event, but he could not make it up the final track, however, as the track was pretty hard, he managed, and there we see them, Jimmy Bergren wins, Torel Torland second, and Joachim Knudsen third. Gwimdr Eliasson was fourth on Thor, however, Atli Yamil, we will see him in the final track of the day, almost makes it, but he seals his Norwegian title by finishing in fifth place in the final round. Only the second Icelander to win the Norwegian Championship last time it was in 2006 and here we see Atli Yamil, a happy man. And Atli Yamil ends his career on a high, at least he says he's retired and there we can see him passing his car on to the next owners. Now this summer has been fantastic and thanks so much for watching with us, we'll be back next year.